I'm Mort Cooper, your host on Change Your Voice, Change Your Life. In studio with me is uh, Dr. John Curtis, and he has come up with the title of today's program, and that title is... Uh, cures versus no cures. What is that all about, John? Well, you know, uh, this is a field that you're in is a crazy field. I mean, I was talking with somebody at the National... My field is... I, it's, what is my it's field? It's a bizarre field, the, the whole area of speech pathology, because mm -hmm. I thought that the goal of these fields hmm. was really to find a cure for serious conditions and you know that one of the most serious conditions in your field mm -hmm. is spasmodic dysphonia or the strangled voice what is that that's where you lose your voice entirely what does it you, sound like sounds kind of like this and who this, has it I, I want to talk like this who? and that that sound i just made is the actual voice today mm -hmm. of the president of the national spasmodic dysphonia organization the leading nonprofit or agency that disseminates the current and state-of-the-art information, yes, about spasmodic dysphonia. And they, this president, who has received Botox injections, of course, I don't really know how many she's received, mm -hmm. but what I do know about it is that she... I know, I spoke with her too by phone. And her voice is literally unintelligible, mm -hmm. and yet she is advocating and enthusiastic. I mean, euphoric is the way to describe it. She's euphoric mm -hmm. about Botox. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to me? Well, she's, uh, she's got this thing about Botox. She wrote a book uh, about uh, uh, coping with the condition called spasmodic disorder. Ah, oh. um, it's not a put down and it's not a, a negative. Uh, this is a person who is dedicated to helping other people. Uh, she believes that they have to live with this condition for life. The spasmodic dysphonia is called the strangled voice. I call it the monster voice. You can call it uh, strangled strain voice, whatever you want. It was first described by Traub in 1871 as nervous hoarseness. When you hear and use that voice, you understand why Traub came up with that, um, that name. Is, nervous isn't hoarseness. it almost the equivalent today? Mm -hmm. In the in the medical field of having leprosy, mm -hmm. S SD is almost like a human form of leprosy because not only are they treated like they are uh, from another planet, they're they're often attribute mental illness to these people mm -hmm. where it does not exist, and yet the medical profession, mm -hmm. from the inception of this description of this condition from 1871 up through like 1960, viewed this condition as a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. That's now, right. You treated these people back in the days when uh, they were regarding these people as mental or something. What Lep lepers. 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 So what did they tell you when about SD patients when you were in training? Well, number one, uh, the number one thing is be very careful with these people who are talking like that because they can be another Count Dracula and get out there and give you one bite and you're gone. I'm serious, folks. Um, Stay away from them. Be very careful. Uh, my stay at UCLA on the staff from 1961 to about 1969 as staff and faculty uh, was quite taken with the fact that these individuals suffering this terrible voice affliction were not all there, and that was the training I received. Uh, my colleagues in the field had the same view, just the word was on the street, as they say, in the uh, stock field. Uh, the whisper was, watch out for them, you never know what they're going to do. And they were perfectly uh, decent people, I found out, contrary to what I was taught. And I began to figure out that they don't have to suffer the condition they have, they don't have to be lepers, that there are cures of the condition. And I went ahead and, and proved that conclusively over a period of time, listing a number of cures involving UCLA Medical Center, diagnosed uh, strangled voices, scripts, uh, Cedar Sinai, Mayo Clinic, and so forth. I, I was told by one of the leading researchers mm. in the field, if not the leading researcher in mm. the area of, of uh, laryngology at the National Institutes of Health, her name is Dr. Christy Ludlow, mm. that you have nothing new to report about spasmodic dysphonia. Mm. She was uh, uh, hosting a conference that was sponsored by the drug maker Allergan, who mm. manufactures Botox, and I asked her, wouldn't you like to have an alternative approach mm -hmm. that is offering cures to this condition and she said I know of Dr. Cooper's work mm -hmm. he has nothing new to report mm -hmm. 
What's your take on that? I think she's a very, very gifted, humanitarian, compassionate woman, but she's on the wrong road. And she has, she does not report a single cure ever. She is the NIH's, the National Institutes of Health, director of the voice and speech uh, group section, neurology, neurology. And she has never reported a single cure of the condition. She can't comprehend that the condition spasmodic dysphonia is not a neurological problem, which she has as a paradigm, and that it's due to misuse of the voice and that the misuse can be changed. And I report cures year after year dating back to the very early 1970s. Well, Dr. Ludlow believes that this is a neurological condition. She calls it a dystonia. Mm -hmm. So does the medical field. Yes, well, I believe Dr. Ludlow's position on the condition of SD is mm -hmm. very compatible and consistent with the medical paradigm. She uses the term, she comes up with her theory as to the cause of the strangled voice spasmodic dysphonia as molecular biological cause. Yes, that's correct. And what's interesting about that is that when you ask her to entertain the possibility that there's an alternative point of view here, that can't account and explain this condition. She that is non-medical. That it's not medical, it's not neurological, it's mm. not a dystonia, that it's not a biological problem, but or rather... Or a gene-related problem, or a not reflux acid problem. And it's not problem. even a virus. It's, <laughs> it's not, not even, a disease, it's, it's not, not disease. any of the above. These it's, are all it's theories function that the medical community presents to patients with SD. That, in fact, this is a mechanical breakdown that's due to speaking incorrectly. Mm -hmm. She will not stand for it. Mm -hmm. She will not hear it. Mm -hmm. In fact, Dr. Ludlow not only has not produced a cure, as you've suggested over the last number of years, Dr. Uh, Ludlow, the leading researcher in this field from the National Institutes of Health, says there are no cures. Well, so that's the medical community. That's her official position. There are no but cures. But she's just vo voicing and speaking on behalf of the medical community worldwide, saying there are no cures. I'm the only doctor in the world. The only doctor in the world, folks, reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia for over 30 uh, plus years, probably about 35. I have had peer review. That's what they love to have. Uh, I've been, uh, I published in 1980 on that. I have put it in my textbook. I, I wrote about it uh, elsewhere. I've gone to see the Sinai Medical Center. I've gone to Walter Reed Army Hospital. I've gone to major meetings in the country, the Pacific Voice Conference, 1998, and the list goes on, the litany is there. The medical community is deaf to cures, absolutely deaf to cures. They, in the medical community and in the academic world, the Christy Ludlows of the world, the uh, Dr. Uh, Mitchell Brint of the world. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about Dr. Brint, because yeah, I think the, no one the, really understands who he is, but well, Dr. We'll, Brint. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. The, the medical community has done something which I think is, is uh, unfair to the individuals who suffer spasmodic dysphonia. They have guaranteed, guaranteed there are no cures. They, they put that in writing, there are no, no cures. Uh, I cannot guarantee a cure, but I can report I have cures because of what I'm doing. I'm changing the way the individual with the strangled voice talks and taking the voice out of the lower throat where all medicine, medicine believes it's all in the lower throat where SD is coming from, and they're calling it a dystonia, medical problem, a neurological problem, I'm saying that's poppycock. It's coming, um, the voice that they're talking about is a dysphonia. It means that they're talking wrong and they don't know it, and they need to change from the lower throat to the face where all good and great voices are. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, I, I think it's uh, an interesting dilemma that mm. they believe that this is an incurable problem, that there are no cures of this mm. in the face, in the absence of cures. And I talked to Dr. Ludlow. Mm. He said, Dr. Cooper has no proof of his cures. Mm. I said, Dr. Ludlow, with all due respect, <laughs> he is before and after clinical case studies. Isn't that what you expect of somebody who is pr providing evidence, scientific evidence, that in fact there are cures of this mm. condition? You have the patients before, voice, and he provides his treatment to them, and then you measure their voice afterwards. Mm. It seems to me that she's looking for something visual. Mm -hmm. When she asks for the word proof, she's not concerned about the way the patient's voice sounds before and after. She's looking for proof in a, a what visual sense. To the vocal cords. They want to look at the well, vocal well, cords. Well, let me give you, Why uh, is let that? Let me give you uh, an answer to Dr. Ludlow, who. Uh, 
uh, talks about uh, refusing to allow me on the program of March, I think it's 8th, uh, 2003, uh, the explanation uh, that I'm not acceptable to the NIH's Christy Ludlow uh, is very simple because I don't have phase one, phase two, and phase three at the FDA. They're called clinical trials. Yeah. Uh, I don't need phase one, I don't need phase two, and I don't need phase three because I explained to Christy Ludlow that uh, this is not a medical problem, it's not a disease, it's not a gene-related problem, it's uh, not a reflux acid problem, it's not a medical problem. It's a problem of voice misuse. It doesn't come under the aegis or the uh, direction of the FDA. Now, the other thing I want to answer is Christy Ludlow is saying, uh, in, this, in response uh, to her uh, concern and uh, inquiry, I sent Gail Pace back to UCLA's Dr. Gerald Burke, who's the chairman there, and Bruce Garrett, who's his research assistant, very bright, very, very aware, and very competent in what he does. And Dr. Burke had, had diagnosed Gail Pace with abductor and adductor. That's the worst type of voice problem you can have. You are strangling. We have the before. It's a terrible voice. You can see the eyes popping out. You can see the face. All kinds of distortions and so forth. That's a strangled voice. Uh, Dr. Burke was very kind because Gail Pace didn't want Botox and she didn't want surgery, so uh, Gerald is a colleague of mine. I used to be on the staff and faculty at UCLA Medical Center before uh, Gerald Burke was there. And he's very humanitarian, very compassionate, very decent fellow. Uh, he does believe uh, that SD is a medical problem, so he sent her to me. And uh, within one month, she had a perfectly normal voice. I sent her back. They did a video stroboscopy, which shows the vocal cords. This is what Christy Ludlow was asking yeah. you. Uh, do the vocal cords change from the spastic vocal cords to the strangled strain vocal cords and so forth? And she had a perfectly normal uh, appearance. Uh, Dr. Burke uh, said, uh, from what I understand, that she had a normal voice. She's been cured for 14 years. But, that's, so but 14 that, years of, uh, of the I only saw her for of, one month. of those kind of symptoms is still not regarded as a cure in this field to Dr. Ludlow or no, others. No, 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 I think it, it is, but Ludlow is not aware of Gail Pace. So what I did is I sent Dr. Ludlow of the NIH, National Institutes of Health, a whole list of patients diagnosed at UCLA Medical Center, head and neck division, not only under um, Gerald Burke, who diagnosed Gail Pace, but under Paul Ward, the former chairman, when he diagnosed Marjorie Whitman with uh, SD, spasmodic dysphonia, <laughs> Whitman was so severe that it was beyond belief that she could ever, ever get her voice back, and he suggested surgery. That's Paul. I knew Paul well. I served on his uh, faculty. But the point is that I sent uh, Whitman back to Paul Ward. He had diagnosed her with uh, the most severe SD imaginable. Uh, he characterized her as normal. She went on to talk normally, had a cure of, of SD by direct voice rehabilitation. Why can these individuals have a cure of a condition if it's neurological? Could I can't. I, I can't cure something that's neurological. Can I actually, something about Dr. Ward after mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. sent. Um, I uh, sent a whole list of 15, okay. 15 cases of cures and recoveries. When you sent to Gail, Christy Ludlow. Gail Pace went mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. to Dr. Ward. Mm -hmm. And he said no, to to Gerald Burke. To Gerald Burke, okay. Who was the one? Who was the patient that went back to Dr. Marjorie Whitman? Ma Marjorie Whitman went back and mm. uh, to Paul Ward. Paul Ward believed that her voice was normal when when she returned. Yes.